Yeah. Hey, everyone. Uh, so first of all, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm really pleased to be here. And let's get to it. So my name is Argo. I am a computer vision engineer. Currently, I work in a Californian company, uh, company called Verify. And I'm going to talk about two-headed classifiers in computer vision and some use cases. So um, speaking about uh, computer vision, classification problem is as simple as it gets. And yeah, that's kind of true. But in the real world tasks, it's often um, you often have a lot of constraints like uh, model speed, model size, ability to run on mobile. Moreover, you probably have like several tasks uh, or maybe subtasks. And it's not the best idea to have uh, a model for your each task. It's a good idea to op to try to optimize your system overall when it's when it is possible, of course. But for sure, you don't want to lose accuracy because of these things. So uh, that's why I want to talk about this uh, small little technique. And uh, we will start with an example, with an example of a simple, um, pretty simple task. Let's say you need to create a model which can distinguish between uh, two classes. First one is a real document. As you can see on the left, real made from paper, uh, document like receipt and the second class is uh, some sort of a monitor or screen it, it can be a laptop or a big monitor or a tablet or phone or something so uh, you have two classes the uh, task is pretty straightforward you uh, pick a, pick a model uh, you collect your data set make sure it's representative clean and big enough and uh, uh, the only one thing um, here is to pay attention that your data is going to be imbalanced. Yeah, and that's probably it. You're going to get pretty good results uh, with this kind of task. And now let's say that you want to add one more feature to your like uh, small system. Let's say you want to uh, be able to classify if uh, the input image is a document or, or not. So on the third image, you can see it's a can. And uh, you can get sometimes images like that, uh, maybe some marketing material or a bag of chips or something, So which, which is not a document. And uh, frankly speaking, this task with this, maybe uh, you should call it a subtask. It is not as important as your original one. So these two images on the left. So yeah, that's basically a task. Um, you have three classes. Let's take a look to the data set structure. So on the left, right here, uh, you can see that we have three folders, uh, documents, screens, and the third one, not a document. So you have three folders with images. Uh, you have three uh, CSV files and structure is like this on the right. Uh, so the first column is a relative path to the image. And the second column, um, is a class ID. So everything is basic, pretty simple. And uh, let's take a look to the first approach, which comes to mind. And it's, yeah, basically just uh, take three output neurons uh, and, and use your classification model. That's it with a softmax. In this case, you are going to get as a prediction uh, one, uh, one class. So, or it is a, uh, uh, a document, or it's a screen, or it's not a document. And um, actually, this uh, this option is viable, but it's not perfect because, as you remember, as I, as I told earlier, earlier, our first task is more important for us. So we would want more control over it. The second thing, as a hypothesis, maybe for your uh, second subtask, you will need slightly different features extracted for your last uh, classification layer, fully connected layer. So uh, let's take a look to the second approach. Um, so to add a model and um, yeah, to understand it on the high level, let's take a look to the right, to this picture. Uh, and as you can see, we just split the model to the two parts. This is pretty like common thing to have two, uh, two outputs for your model. And in this case, I 
uh, I used a ShuffleNet V2. It, it is a small, fast, and efficient uh, convolutional um, a neural network. It is available in Torch Vision. And uh, let's take a look to the left image. Uh, this is a forward implementation from the Torch Vision. So this is an original model. And up to stage four, we have everything the same. So uh, on this the, the second image, you can see that we also have a uh, base model stage four. So this is like our backbone. It is going to be uh, exactly the same for our two uh, for our two outputs. And uh, convolutional five, this is the last convolution layer. It's when we split our model to two parts. So our each head is going to have its last convolutional layer. Uh, and then it's going to have global pooling and fully connected layer for, for a classification. Uh, yeah, that's a high level understanding. We'll get a little bit deeper uh, in a moment, but let's talk about pros and cons of this approach. Uh, yeah, the first, first of all, uh, the pro is that we have one model for two subtasks, which is good. Second thing is that we have more control over our uh, over our model, over our, our uh, system. That's also good. And uh, one last thing, uh, I wrote here good accuracy, but I haven't shown you uh, that we really get good accuracy. But the hypothesis, the hypothesis is that we're going to get it, but I will show it later. Uh, yeah, and cons, uh, speaking about cons, you're going to get a little bit um, slower inference time. Uh, and your model is going to increase a little bit in the size. So uh, for ShuffleNet v2, uh, the smaller one, I export it to TensorFlow Lite, and I can say that uh, I originally got 500 kilobytes, and with two edit model, I get around 700 kilobytes. So yeah, it's, uh, it's not that bad, but uh, it's there. Now, let me show you some um, code examples. Just give me a sec. Yeah, right here. So when, uh, now when we have a high level understanding of what uh, what's the idea of two edit model, I will uh, quickly show uh, the things that we want to change in our uh, pipeline. So I use PyTorch. This is a pretty basic ordinary uh, training pipeline. And in the dataset class, I want to show just one thing actually. Uh, get item function. So originally we get our image path and label from our CSV file that I showed earl earlier. And there were three uh, class IDs, zero, one, and two. What we, what we want to change here is to have output like this image label for our first head and label for our second head. So all we do, we just pick uh, original label uh, and split it to two parts for our first head and second head. So basically we're uh, we're going to end up with two binary classification models, sub-models. Um, all right, that's uh, actually it with a data set. Let's go ahead. Um, again, with the architecture, uh, everything is pretty simple. Um, this function create head con conf it just creates a convolutional layer, which is exactly the same as conv v5 from original model. And we just create uh, two uh, two layers like this for each of, of our heads. Um, you can see we run it here and here for the first and second heads. Uh, then, as I told earlier, we use global pooling and our fully connected layer for classification. And again, um, we have two outputs. So it's our head one and head two. Let's go ahead to our training pipeline. A couple of things that we need to change here. I think it's uh, already obvious, but we are going to get um, inputs, labels one and two. So inputs, it's um, a batch of our images. Labels one, it's a batch of our labels for our first head, and labels two is a batch of labels of the second head. Uh, what we do next, we run our inputs through our model and get two outputs. 
Uh, now, interesting part, uh, when I was talking about control, um, here is what I was talking about. Um, so we have two, we were computing loss function, uh, uh, loss two times for each head. So one, one time per head. Then we say that, look, we want our main loss uh, to be like, like this one. We, wa we want loss of the first head to be two times heavier than, loss, than the loss of the second head. So with this technique, we just stay focused on our main task. Uh, we prioritize it. Um, next, you can see here evaluate. This is a, basically a function to uh, to compute metrics, and you you would want to change uh, that function too because you obviously have two outputs now. Uh, but that's not important. Uh, one more thing uh, about the control I was talk talking about. Uh, as you can see, I pick a uh, I pick a best model ba based on the F one score of the first head. So as uh, my first head is more important, I said that I want to pick a model which performs best uh, with the first head. Yeah, and that's basically it with the training pipeline. Now let me get back to the presentation. Uh, and let's talk about results. Uh, you can see here three models. Uh, the first one is basic approach, uh, three output neurons with input size uh, 256. The second one is uh, the same, just with input size 320. And the last one is our two-headed architecture. So why I included a 320 model? Let's take a look to the latency. And as you can see, our two-headed model right here, it is a little bit slower than our original one. So that's why I picked um, like 320 input to match inference time with our uh, two-headed model, uh, just to see uh, the results that we're going to get. And now let's talk about metrics. Um, yeah, one more thing. In this kind of task, precision is a lot more important than recall. Uh, that's why from the first two models, I would choose the second one because precision is 1.0 and recall is a little bit a little bit slower a little bit lower but as you can see um, anyways our third model is better both in precision and recall um yeah so couple of words about this metrics these metrics are not based on the train or val or test sets uh this data set was uh created from like uh, production data, which was not in any way connected to uh, training pipeline. So it's completely new data for the model. Uh, and that's why this kind of metrics are good for this task. And second thing, uh, the latency, I measured uh, inference time uh, plus transforms and softmax, just to make sure that uh, it, it, it is like as close to real world uh, experience as possible. All right, um, to sum up, uh, classification task is easy, but it gets harder when uh, you get all real world constraints and you, you're you always going to get them. Uh, second thing, try to optimize your subtasks and try not to create K models for every big task. It's not manageable. It's not the best approach. Uh, third thing, uh, Customize your models and training pipelines to have a better control over your, over your task. And the last thing, this is actually really important. Um, uh, test your hypothesis, run experiments, and save results. So uh, this should be uh, maybe obvious, but uh, when you have a hypothesis, you should uh, really create your uh, experiments. You should run them and use some sort of instrument to make sure that you remember what you did. Uh, I use Hydra for configs and weights and biases for uh, tracking experiments. It doesn't matter what you use, but you really want to use that because when you're going to run several experiments, uh, you're going to forget what, what you changed and uh, that's, not going, that's not going to uh, 
uh, help really. So yeah, I use uh, this kind of instruments. And uh, yeah, one last thing, I'm talking about like two-headed architecture that it's better, it's uh, its accuracy is better. But uh, at the first, it was a hypothesis. So it worked in my case with my data set uh, and with my model. So it doesn't mean that you should uh, uh, get, uh, you should take this approach and uh, use it in, in your case. You should, you should try it. You should try that it works better. Uh, but I can say that I tried it in several, uh, like in different tasks. So I can say that it, uh, it is a valid, valid thing to, to do, obviously. Uh, all right, and uh, that's basically it. I have a couple of links. If you have any questions, you can contact me on the LinkedIn. I created a repo with all the code uh, for uh, trying out uh, these two approaches. So you you be, you you'll basically just need your data set, uh, and you can try uh, to see how it works for you. And last thing, I wrote a small article on uh, this theme. So if you want, you can come back and uh, read it. I'll stop sharing the screen and um, I'm ready to answer any questions if you have some. Uh, yeah, I see. Actually, uh, I did not try out this approach that uh, Jaden is talking about. And again, uh, the thing that I told in the end with hypothesis and uh, testing, uh, you really should uh, try it out and see how, how you're going to get your results. So that's probably the answer.